So my name is Bryant. I'm the, the lead technical guy at DAPDES, which is a decentralized learning community uh, here in New Haven. So, of course, you got to talk about the granddaddy of all blockchains. Um, so you got to talk about Bitcoin. Um, when you, uh, f most of you guys probably already know this, but you got to have one of these slides in every every presentation you give about blockchain. So, blockchain is a data structure. You uh, submit each transaction, you collate them into blocks, and then you link each block as you go through um, your network activity. Um, and the really cool thing about blockchain as a data structure is if you were to try to modify one in the middle, like that guy over there, um, it's very easy to see that a modification was made unless you populate that all the way through the chain. Um, blockchain networks are groups of computers that are all storing the same ledger of uh, stored in a blockchain. And since they're all storing the same blockchain, if someone, in, uh, if someone were to try to submit a uh, modification in the middle of the chain, the rest of the network could identify and reject that change. Uh, it's the underpinning of all most of the cryptocurrencies in the space right now and um, is trying to be used as the technology under a lot of permission ledgers and distributed ledger technologies and other things that IBM tries to sell you. So. Um, as some of it you might know, Bitcoin is not just blockchain. Um, it's blockchain plus consensus rules for how to append uh, new transactions to the network uh, with a permissionless system. So the network uh, has uh, rules in place for validating uh, all changes that are proposed in the network through, uh, through new transactions. Um, and any violations of those rules are rejected. Um, so consensus is just basically adding new links to the blockchain as you, as you form it over time. Uh, so miners propose, propose uh, new blocks of transactions, and they all compete to get that, uh, that block added to the end of the chain and grow the, and grow the, the ledger over time. Uh, in order to do that, they must solve the proof of work puzzle, uh, which is, which is, um, which is uh, this algorithm over here. And basically, it lets you uh, have a time-bound um, puzzle that you have to solve that is easy to verify once it is solved. Um, the difficulty of that puzzle is something that can be modified over time. So each, uh, each miner, once it's solved, publishes the block to the network, updates the difficulty as, as part of the algorithm. Um, and the idea is, is that the more miners that are on the network, the more likelihood that they are randomly able to find and discover the answer to the proof-of-work puzzle. Um, so by increasing the difficulty, increasing the amount of time it takes, they can maintain a steady block uh, addition rate of about 10 minutes. Um, different blockchains choose different parameters. I'm primarily an Ethereum guy, so Ethereum uses 15 seconds uh, for that rate. It's all up to uh, what the properties are you're trying to maintain. Uh, so Bitcoin solved a lot of problems. Uh, the double spending attack is classically what people think about as the primary problem Bitcoin solves. Digital cash systems have been tried before, but uh, the combination of Bitcoin's uh, approach of using the blockchain data structure and using economic incentives to secure the network are primarily what uh, makes it, made it successful. It also kind of solves the 51% attack. So the, one of the attacks that most people know about uh, on, on a blockchain network is that if you own the majority uh, share of the people adding and proposing new blocks, there is a, a scenario where that person controls the conversation and is able to um, make their own determinations of what is true. Um, but because uh, mining is economically incentivized by the block reward and the fees that are charged per transactions, um, as the value held in the network grows, it incentivizes more and more miners to get into that activity, securing the network with more and more economic value that would have to be overcome in order to attack the network. Um, so I, I really see it as actually a solution to that problem. Whoa, whoa, whoa. As a solution to that problem, uh, the other thing that Bitcoin really brought to the table is that this idea of crypto economics or mechanism design using economic design mechanisms to uh, have certain properties be withheld, uh, be uh, activated by your network. So the miners, as I mentioned before, are motivated to mine because they earn this economic reward for mining the network. And as that economic reward grows in value over time, more and more people are getting into it trying to earn that reward. Um, 
This means that uh, due to the careful balance of those forces, they're able to incentivize miners to want to mine instead of attack the network. So crypto economics just means basically economic solutions to software problems. So when uh, Bitcoin was being dissolved, uh, devised, uh, the creator of Bitcoin basically asked themselves questions like these. Why would anyone want to use this? How do I prevent attacks on my network? How do I distribute coins to people in the first place? At that time, the crowd sale wasn't really a thing you could do. Um, whereas like in Ethereum, they did, they did an initial crowd sale to distribute uh, the initial amount of coins. But in, uh, in, in the Bitcoin network, that didn't exist. That infrastructure wasn't in existence yet. So by designing this actually into the underpinning of the consensus rules of the network, they, he, uh, whoever Satoshi was, was able to answer these questions. Um, what Bit Bitcoin really is, is a provably rare digital asset. And it's one of the first of its kind. Um, since, um, since there's only 21 million of them that will ever be in existence, uh, that rarity basically says, hey, I have this thing. I know only certain people can own it. And it's provably rare. And whatever value you see in that is whatever value is, can be attributed to that, uh, to that specific token. Um, so yeah, so that, that's what I think is the really the real innovation behind Bitcoin and all, all the cryptocurrency technologies. Um, but it does currently have some issues. Uh, being the first in its, of its kind, uh, of course, scalability is one of the things that a lot of people talk about. Uh, the ability to add more transactions over time. It's currently locked at about two to four transactions per second, which compared to Visa's uh, transaction rate of you know, 24,000, is nothing really to shake a stick at. Um, but there have been uh, suggestions for growing that. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, of course, is suggested just increasing the block size until you manage to, um, to contain that. Um, SegWit was a way to reduce some, the amount of data that is actually being stored on the network. Um, and second layer technologies like Lightning Network are using Bitcoin, this highly secure um, but very slow top layer to enable very fast and very, um, uh, very uh, cheap underpinning on the second layer of that network. There are, there are some extensibility upgrades. So Bitcoin actually has a scripting language inside. It's very, uh, it's very, it's not very, uh, um, yeah, I can't remember the word. It's not, it, it's not Turing complete. So you can't implement any arbitrary idea or logical uh, design you want into it. Um, but, uh, and you also can't really implement too much logic in there in the first place. So Merkleize ASTs are something that have been, been developed for the Bitcoin blockchain that allows you to um, kind of encapsulate your whole program logic um, into a cascade structure. So you only have to store certain parts as you're going through um, and using your, your network. So you can actually store larger programs on the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, but ultimately, a uh, need for a Turing complete uh, language was, was uh, necessary. So a uh, generalized smart contract framework called Ethereum popped up in order to solve that uh, question. It's really the underpinning for a lot of the application design that is going on in the blockchain space. Uh, lastly, and, and uh, the next speaker will talk about this a bit more, privacy is a really interesting issue to uh, using these networks. Um, it's a really interesting balance that needs to be struck, um, but in, in terms of purely what's going on, uh, Lightning, Light, the Lightning Network is also enabling peer-to-peer uh, -peer transactions over onion-routed uh, uh, packets, so you don't really know who it's going to or where it's going from unless you're the only two people involved in that transaction. And there's other uh, privacy-focused cryptocurrencies like Zcash and Monero that have proposed different solutions to that problem. All right, so that was your little bit of introduction. We're gonna go over a lot of different other kinds of different talks. Just a little plug from me. So uh, I'm uh, the lead technical guy behind uh, DevDevs.org. We're an autonomous learning community that's focused on project-based learning. And we specialize in smart contract development services if you guys have any need of that. Um, so there you go.